Do you can't figure out. Morning, everybody. <laughs> Morning. Um, I'm Councillor Rosemary Birchall. I'm Chairman of the North East Arid Crematorium Board. And I welcome you to this meeting of the North East Arid Crematorium Board on the 7th of December. Uh, this meeting is being live streamed uh, by the Council website and will be available following the meeting. I would like to welcome those members of the public watching the live stream or and those attending in purpose. Um, we will ask, um, can I ask everybody to introduce themselves um, before we start so that the people watching know who we are? So I'm Rosalie Birchall. I am from Wandsworth Council. And I'm Nigel. No, I'm, 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 I'm Nigel. I'm Thank you. I'm Councillor Anne Morrell and I'm London Borough Sutton. I'm Councillor Jean Crosby and I'm the London Borough Sutton. Good morning, Tony Belton, Councillor from Wandsworth. Uh, Anna Marie Critchard, also from Wandsworth. Hello, Terry Walsh, Councillor, Southfields Ward, Wandsworth. Arbor Ward, Bereavement Services Manager at North East Surrey Crematorium. Hi, I'm Mark Davies, I'm the Treasurer for North East Surrey. Hi, I'm Andrew, to the board. Yeah, okay, we'll um, so, can we have um, apologies? We have apologies for all councillor, my rider. Thank you. Um, declaration of interests. <laughs> um, can we now go to the minutes of the last meeting? Does anybody have anything that they want to, to bring up? Councillor Richard. Uh, thank you. Um, on page two, I actually think the, the note says members discuss wildlife and diversity at the site and ways that this could be encouraged. I think we said something more. Like I think we said we wanted to hear, have a report or some action about it. I think that was what happened. Yes, council. If I could uh, come in there, um, I contacted Enables Biodiversity Officer after the meeting, um, and they sent me a report as to their intentions for cemeteries in general in Wandsworth. I would say at this point that this is more a Wandsworth initiative than the Surrey initiative because we'll only have a sixty-nine acre cemetery. Three acres of that is North East Surrey Crematorium. So it's within the footprint. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say is the majority of um, biodiversity would be carried out by Wandsworth, and that would be carried out by Wandsworth, but uh, sorry, enabled on behalf of Wandsworth. So what I propose to do is send over an email, an open email to all councillors uh, as to the findings of that report. So we wouldn't discuss it here? Uh, I can, but I'm just wondering whether or not this is more a Wandsworth initiative rather than a North East Surrey initiative. Yeah, I would agree, because does, could you just keep on, does Enable look after the whole of the cemetery site as well? Yes, they do. So they are already have a biodiversity strategy? Yes, they do. So I think that we are on the back of that for our three acres. Um, but if, if we're going to get a report, that would be really helpful. Well, I, I will distribute that um, in the next week or so. Thank you. Uh, with my own comments as well uh, to all board members. Yeah. Thank you. Can I Uh Yes, thank you. On page four, um, it says the Garden of Remembrance um, would be completed in September. Has it been completed yet? Yes, it has. Okay. Yes, yes. And uh, Terminal of Ashes uh, started, uh, Barbara, when did we start to enter back in the long? Um, June. Yeah. Yes, but it's all finished now. Um, we've got a stone book of remembrance that we're working on, which will be in situ, hopefully, by the March meeting. Um, and I'll report on that at the time. Thank you very much. So, 
Councillor Bridgeland, you wanted to come back to something. No, this is a totally different thing is this aircon is extremely fierce. I'm either going to no. Is it possible? We'll see if I can turn it down. It's okay. Is that okay? Sorry. Okay. What's up? Turn the air con down slightly. Um, it should be on a little bit, please. Yeah. If possible. If that's really dreadful, then I'll go and sit over there. Yeah. Is it noisy? Yes. Oh, that's it. Is well, that all right? It's blowing the papers everywhere, that's all. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sad. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Well, can I just clarify a, a response that the spider just gave there? Um, within the minutes, um, it was talking about uh, acquiring the piece of land by September. Um, I think Clive uh, mistakenly commented on the um, creation of the Ashes Lawn, which obviously is, is now complete. Uh, the, the acquisition is still going through. Um, I am trying my level best to get the two respective parties to give me regular updates so i have access through to the um the, the not access not direct access to the wandsworth um, solicitors um acting on behalf of wandsworth and have access to the solicitors acting on behalf of north east surrey i mean we're getting there it's, it's the final minute details of the the, the legal agreements behind the land transfer things like running water drain off of water and, and bits like that that's still to be clarified it's, it's very frustrating and very disappointing that we can't sit here and say it's done um, but I'm trying my hardest. Misread your, uh, your yeah, yeah. comment. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for. Thank you. Sorry. Did you want an amendment to the minutes about the biodiversity one? I think I, I I just thought we said something slightly stronger at the time. That was my my thought. I mean, if we're going to get the report, that's okay. Yeah. I, I think it's a, a a reasonable overview from the comments that were made last time, and I think it would be easier if I I uh, sent it to everybody, and then of course I'll I'll convey any any questions from that back through enable back to board. But I think what I was trying to say was I think this is primarily a Wandsworth initiative rather than a North East Surrey one, but by default, the, within the footprint of the cemetery, North East Surrey has three acres of land. So, but it is a, a Wandsworth and North East Surrey. And I think within the cemetery, they have, I mean, there is a lot of biodiversity. Our three acres are probably more built up and have lots of flowers and well, certainly the cemetery is more rural than the, yes. the crematorium. Yes. yes. Right. Um, we have a urgent business. Um, so can I now ask um, Mr. Andrews to um, give us the surveyor's report? Chair, um, if I could take you to point 1.1. This is a summary, and um, this is my report for the quarter up to December 2021, the management agreement between North East Surrey and Wandsworth Council. The day-to-day -day management of those responsibilities carried out on behalf of Wandsworth by Enable Leisure and Culture. I could take you to 3.2, which is business level activity. I could draw your attention to page 13 of the report. Um, you'll see the statistics for the seven months of this financial year. Uh, they're broadly in line with previous years, with the exception of 2021, where, of course, we had to suffer from the consequences of COVID. Um, I can report that we carried out 181 cremations for the month of November. Um, that's slightly higher than the average. Um, and to date, this month, we've already booked 157 cremations for the month of December. Um, well, there is some of these a consequence of COVID, would you say? Um, COVID is creeping back into the cause of death again, yes. Um, 
I still believe we're broadly in line with the average for those other years, and therefore we're going to keep the estimate of 1,950 cremations for the full year. Um, that could increase to 2,000, but at the moment, we, uh, the Treasurer and I believe that we ought to keep it at 1,950 just for now. Um, it's just to make you all, you're all aware of that. Um, unfortunately, uh, this isn't in colour, so it's difficult to, to uh, compare in terms of the bar chart and the flow chart. But I think the, the figures speak for themselves and we're, as I say, broadly in line with the average for this time of year. Are there any questions on the performance figures? That's overall. Um, it was just it was just for Barbara. Um, what's the percentage, Barbara? You said that COVID was 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 creeping in. What's the excuse me? Um, very low at the moment. The percentage, um, probably not even two percent. Mm. It, is, it is low compared to what it was like for twenty twenty. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Take to 3.3 performance monitoring of the report. I'm not intending on going through every paragraph. I just wanted to uh, point out some of the more points and certain points. Uh, 3.6 um, A review of the seating in the chapel uh, will be carried out now in the new year um, and will be part of my March report. Um, Barbara and her team just haven't had time to carry that particular task out at the moment. Um, they've been very busy, uh, but we, we need we will capture that uh, in the next few months. Um, 3.10, Enable Leisure and Culture have recently employed uh, a new company to carry out all of their fire risk assessments across the borough. Um, and they're the buildings that they manage on behalf of the council. Um, so accordingly, a new fire risk assessment has been carried out for the crematorium and its associated buildings. Um, and water testing and the emergency plan were found to be up to date with all the remedial works actions where necessary. But as a result of that fire risk assessment, um, we've had a meeting, Barbara and I have had a meeting with the premises manager to ensure that there, there is absolute compliance with the procedures noted in the document. A review of that actions, including record keep, keeping and further staff training will form part of the next quarterly inspection report. Now, part of that further training will be fire marshal training, which, which you'll see in my report as I get to it, has already been carried out for some staff, something that, that uh, was drawn to our attention. Um, I wasn't going to comment any more on performance monitoring. There isn't anything else that's uh, in really outstanding for the last three months. But if board members have got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Um, 3.16 under quality control. I'm very pleased to say there were no complaints recorded in the past three months. Now. Yeah, I always take uh, you know quite a quite a bit of joy from that because uh, when you get a, a complaint in bereavement services, sometimes they're very very difficult to to answer because you've obviously got the wave of emotion that fuels sometimes people's uh, stance on things and uh, things can go very wrong very very quickly. Um, so I wanted to make a note that there were no complaints there in the past three months. Um, 3.18 employee matters. Uh, we've, we've recruited the uh, new crematorium technician and now we're fully staffed at the crematorium. Um, one of the cremator technicians awaits notification for his final testing. For his uh, technician's training certificate, which is um, nationally recognised, you need to have that qualification to work in the crematorium. Um, and as I've already mentioned, two of the staff have recently completed fire marshal training in accordance with the fire risk assessment. 
Um, point three point two zero. Could I draw your attention to page fifteen, which is Appendix B? Um, just want to update you on some of the actions from the action plan. Item one. Um, we've now received a copy of the 2021 annual, annual emissions test report in accordance with our permit to cremate. And I'm also pleased to say that everything is in order. The machines are working efficiently and there's nothing to bring to the board's attention. Item three. Sorry. Three point three seven of my name report. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Has that been issued? Three point three zero, councillor. Um, well, that's that's part of my um, DNOX emissions abatement report, which I'm going to to uh, report on uh, later in this report. So if you, if you can uh, just allow me to get through uh, the, the rest of this agenda beforehand. Um, page 16 of Appendix B, um, and this is under item three, which is the purchase of the new land to extend the Garden of Remembrance. Um, as the Treasurer has said, um, there's a spat going on between the respective uh, uh, solicitors and uh, we haven't come to a conclusion yet. I believe it's now with the board solicitors, South, uh, South London Legal Partnership, and um, Mark's following this up every week um, to try and move them along. Um, that said, um, we're moving along with the operational aspects of developing the lawn. Um, in the expectation that we're going to get final decision quite soon. And uh, with that in mind, we now have got a timeline for the new Garden of Remembrance Councillor. So basically, Wandsworth are holding this up. Is this, is this what? I, I, I wouldn't and um... Is there anything that the Wandsworth councillors could do to chivy it along? Um, I mean, it's, it's a small value disposal in terms of you know, what Wandsworth deal with. Um, I, I think it, it's probably a little bit of almost it's to and fro it really between the respective parties. Um, so it's now with the board solicitors to respond to the Wandsworth queries. Um, it, I'm, I'm not going to blame one side or the other. They, they both in my opinion, could be going a little bit quicker. But are we both using the South London legal policy? No, no, so one's up here in Ashford, so, so to have... Are they yeah, using yeah, somewhere different? Yeah. To have proper segregation of yeah, duties within the, the sale process, obviously yeah, you couldn't use the same solicitor for both, to act on both sides. Um, so we, we were fortunate enough, we as in uh, North East Surrey, to use SLLP, and you know, ones that use Ashley because they had access to uh, another firm. So I mean, they're, they're both organisations that you know they have long-standing relationships with. Um, I don't know. This is common with other disposers. It wouldn't strike me as being something that is particularly difficult. Uh, it's just transfer of a piece of land within a cemetery. I mean, there are restrictions and legal covenants over it, um, but it's not like a, a large parcel or disposal that would be more first to deal within ones of. So the other question was, is there something that well, is there anything that the Wandsworth Council, some particular perhaps the majority party might be able to help with in order to chivy this along? Um, I mean, it would never hurt. Let's, let's, let's take stock um, in, in the new year. Uh, I, I would hope it comes to a natural conclusion over the next couple of weeks, but obviously mindful of the Christmas break might slow things up further. Um, 
but if I do need some gentle persuasion from uh, members, then maybe I might be um, twisting an arm. Thank you very much. I mean, the thing is, if it's going at a snail's pace, which is frustrating, mm -hmm. but it's not stopping you from planning. So as soon as the sale comes through, you get mm -hmm. we can be getting going on the on the remembrance card. I mean, there's, there's nothing in the discussions that might break the discussions down. I mean, we've got to you know step away from it. So in that regard, whilst we're cautious about committing money in advance of the actual physical acquisition and the land being in the in the in the board's uh, ownership um i, I think we're, we're, we're fairly comfortable in that we could we can make these preparations now um and, and, and have surveys done because you know once we've got the piece of land we want to start being able to use it as, as quick as practically possible so can i um can councillor rosby was thank you i was just going to say uh as soon as you've got the okay with this mark could you please let us know so we don't have to wait until the next meeting yeah no it will be something that i'll uh, be quite pleased to update everybody thank you yes Councillor what yes it, it, I, I agree entirely with my colleague here it's far too slow uh and i think we ought to just be telling them that it is far too slow but sorry as a result of this delay are there any indirect costs that uh this is the yeah. I was all in board would be picking up. Delay often uh, causes some costs to be there. I suppose so. Uh, perhaps the council can pay those costs. If, if I can come back, I don't think there's any indirect costs as such. I mean, there is the opportunity cost of not having that land available and not being able to lay out any new uh, memorial um, offerings. Um, but it'd be very difficult to quantify that. Um, if it was all one-sided, um, maybe that would be an avenue we could pursue. But it's this sort. Let's of, say it's a bit of two and a fro at the moment. So, are we lose? I mean, are we having to do any tasks twice as a result of the delay? Uh, is there any loss of interest on the on the money that's been set aside for this, or is that just a general account? Um, no, I'm mean, it, so, I mean, the money's held on deposit, and I can call that back at seven days' notice. So obviously, that's sitting within the, the main investment account at the moment. And once we get agreement and a, a proper completion date, I can make sure we got the funds in our account. So um, we're not losing any interest there. I don't believe we're double handling anything in terms of operationally. Um, yes, but there must be some reason why there is a delay of this nature. It's not a long time. I seem to remember sitting elsewhere. Uh, this going through and being approved. I mean, it seems to me this has gone back burner, which is unusual given that, you know, um, we were sort of ready to do the deal as well. No, I, I, I take on board your frustrations and I will. The point you. is that, you know, unless these things are challenged, uh, Chair, uh, you know, understandably anonymous people just go on doing what they're doing. And, uh, you know, this doesn't sort of help local authorities or public boards like this, you know, it doesn't put us in a very good light. I just wonder, you know, if there are any reoccurring costs that we are, I can't think of one, but mm. we are sort of building up, like having to revise plans or a new, new system or something. Nothing. I, I'm personally, I can't think of anything. I mean, you know, if, if surveys expire because they've only got a certain valid validity, uh, I'm, 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 I I'm not sure. sure. It's registered land. Our time. Our time. Yeah. Our time. We could be giving with other things. Yes, exactly. Yes, I think um, we were just chased up and possibly, and Councillor Richard, you have one very good comment. Well, I think the other thing to say about this, of course, is this is all to do with gardening and seasonal. So my guess is if this delays, the plan is that um, the work started March 2020. That must that also must be an issue that if we don't manage to start within a certain time, then the season for sorting out the, the new garden, laying the new garden and handing it over will, will be missed for a year. Um, and I'm so you're pitching the nail on the head. Yeah, you know, costs of digging up change as time goes on, don't they? You're correct as well. Um, if we don't own the land, we can't really get to work in March. 
to, to begin to develop a new garden of remembrance. So it's quite crucial that yes. it's included. This is not a problem, this is not a force by the, what I see it of course, it's the force of the council. I suggest, Chair, that you perhaps, uh, or someone actually has a word uh, with, uh, you know, financial soul, shall we say, and sort of ask what's happening. You know, we're just like in a queue that's not moving, if you like. I mean, there's no no real excuse for it. I mean, it's all registered land, I yeah. often think. You know, I don't think it's a particularly difficult deal. I agree. We will, um, I, I just talked to Mr. Davies and find out who to write to. Brush your fist on the table. <laughs> yes, that's the fist crossing. Thank you. Well, notwithstanding the comments we've just, just had, there is a positive to this. And as you can see, we've now established a timeline for the new Garden of Remembrance. And I'm very much hoping that we can deliver a new Garden of Remembrance to the public uh, next August. Um, so uh, we, we are moving away. We are, we are uh, working hard in the background whilst the, the solicitors are doing what they're doing or not. Um, item five and six, there are delays I've got to report. Um, Barbara hasn't had the opportunity to go out and speak to the funeral directors as yet, um, but I believe it's uh, her intention to go out in the new year and uh, speak to funeral directors it's not just barbara being busy but funeral directors are busy as well uh and between the two um it's a course of delay um and there is also going to be, be another delay to the update of the website because we thought it was prudent that we wait until we develop the new garden of remembrance so we can take some flattering photographs of the new gardens and then of course that's part of our marketing plan um people can see what North East Surrey can 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 actually provide for people and we've always provided quite an array of different memorials uh the new guard won't be any different there will be an array of different memorials I've seen a draft of the specification um there's going to be a new memorial fountain people are attracted to running water um and they, they like to see something there. So we're working on designs for that as well. Um, so I'm hoping to bring you something um, you know, more exciting at the uh, March meeting on that. Um, Sorry, that's um, could I, um, if, the, if the garden's not going to be completed till, till August, then does that mean that the the update of the website won't be completed until August. If you want to put the pictures of the garden and everything on there. Yeah, I think that's a fair comment. Um, I think the the uh, the website at the moment, I mean, it's fairly robust. I think the information that, that's needed is at hand. Um, and we've got, we, we can't show them what we haven't got. And at the moment, we're going to introduce some, some new memorials. So yes, you're absolutely correct, Councillor that won't happen until post august of next year so it will go into the new financial year before it's concluded okay. um an item eight on the port environmental improvement i'm just about to deliver my report on denox abatement so um if we go back to my my main reports um, and 3.22 are appendices C and D, which are pages 19 and 20 of your pack. And I'll just give you some updates on those. I wasn't proposing to go through the revenue and repairs, but I'm happy to answer any questions that the board may have on appendix C. On Capital Works, um, line one, the renewal of the Ashes Law, um, this will include the installation of Stone Book of Remembrance 
um, and additional shrub and tree planting. In fact, I was there a couple of days ago, and it's now all in front of the um, World War II Civilian War Dead War Memorial. It's now been planted. It looks fantastic. Uh, there's a resin pathway there. If I compared it to before we started the project, it's 1,000% better. And I sent some photographs over to the Imperial War Museum, and they asked permission if they could replicate those photographs on their website. Um, so I think that's a real, a, 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 you know, for everybody involved, that, that's a, a really good move. Um, well done. Um, line four, Garden Remembrance stage, stage one. Now, I've had to increase the, uh, the budget on this because uh, we've, I've already received some indicative costs from a contractor as to how much it's going to cost to redevelop the, the uh, gardens. Um, there is a huge increase in um, costs for materials um, and labour as well. Um, and therefore, I've added um, a 15% uplift on, on this. Of course, we won't know until we've completed the tender exercise. Um, and the preparatory works includes the production of a bespoke specification, which includes drainage plans. Um, now, drainage is a real issue at, at uh, Morgan Cemetery because we've got three problems there. We've got um, a piece of land that was old marshland before it was a cemetery come 150 years ago you've got a very high water table there and it's predominantly made up of london clay so combine the three together and you've got a problem of of uh, groundwater flooding uh, we've got to alleviate that uh, as part of the specification to ensure that we don't have a flooded new garden of remembrance so of course that has i've had to build that into the costs as well um and uh line nine the, I just um, go back on that sorry yeah um, what you just said worries me a bit um we all know that flooding and very fast flooding is part of because land doesn't retain as much water as it used to and there's too much running of water off if we're going to drain it, we're going to increase this problem. The whole of the country, well, the whole of the world has actually. Um, wouldn't it be better to retain the water somehow, like making a big lake out of it or something? I mean, draining it off so that the water table in London in general just takes more and more, more rapidly in storms it seems difficult to me. The subject was brought up some months ago when we were putting the ashes lawn together and um, a tank to retain the surface water was talked about. Um, the very nature of the land, um, I'd rather not put on um, talk about that. I can talk, I can send an email to you in private for reasons why I don't believe it's prudent to to keep the uh, the groundwater from those particular areas. Um, I will make a note to send an email to board members as this is being recorded. That sounds very intriguing. But I mean, you generally know the, the issue that uh, the, the ability we have of draining the land, yes. land so rapidly yep. that just made life very difficult all over the country. Well, well it won't because we've got two land drains already there on the periphery of this particular piece of land and the the idea will be to to have um, uh, pipe work in place and that will drain into the land drains. Into where though? Into the main sewer. Which is where we have the problem. We, we, we just can't run it off. The whole sorry the whole thrust of this argument particularly in scotland of course but i mean here as well is that the land has to retain the water longer it mustn't drain it off because that's causing the problem when there's a big storm it drains too quickly it's got to be able to retain it for natural course to take well some of it will there will be high points there but what we've got to be mindful of is if we you're introducing uh, memorials to people, uh, particularly in the winter months, 
we can't afford them to be flooded and people wading through water to get to a loved one's memorial. I, I, I think, to, with, to be fair, I did suggest creating a lake or something. I wasn't suggesting people battle through. I mean, yeah. But, okay. It just seems to me to be a worrying... That seems to be something you ought to be concerned about. Well, we, we are taking that on board. Well, that's why we put a French drain in and around the Ashes Lawn, um, and that's proved to be very effective. Um, well, the Ashes Lawn, yes. So the Ashes Lawn, if you but remember... the rest of the system? Um, it's, it's, it's not too far away from the Ashes Lawn, so the characteristics of the soil uh, makeup will, will be similar. Um, so we believe that we, 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 the drainage system we'll put in place Will be affected but i take take your point on board but i would like to send an email as to the reasons why um i don't believe we should be retaining water groundwater uh in, in those particular areas thank you oh sorry um councillor yes yeah, so i seem to remember um raising a few points on this one uh, before uh following on what councillor belton says um have we in all this, uh, have, have you in all this approached Merchant in terms of uh, consulting them? Because they have a lot of actions, no doubt, going on in the area. And if the drain is going at 100% capacity away from this site, it might cause, I don't know, some sort of problem. And possibly the drain system is sort of Victorian or whatever. Have you actually consulted them or let them know sort of, I mean, they've seen probably any planning issues, but I'm just talking particularly about drainage. I'll speak to the company that are putting together the specification, which includes the drainage as well. And I will request that they speak to Merton to see if, if there are any issues that might come about from the drainage plan we're putting in for the new garden of remembrance well i don't think you're requesting are you you're telling them they've got to do that if they think if they if their plans suggest yeah okay then i'll tell them i think you've got to really well i will I, in, that's what i just said council i will include it uh, in my conversations with and just on that one i mean we we're going to go in the next 20 or 30 years no doubt in a period of floods and uh, and deserts as it were and nothing happening uh, do we actually have any limited storage facility whereby uh, a certain amount of water can be retained. Um, I wouldn't have thought so, but I don't know if there's any, any, anything around. At the moment we've got, we've got a, uh, we've got a pump, an underground pump that is in the, um, the rugby field, which pumps water away onto the floodplain which is adjacent to the cemetery itself. So really it's displacing water from an area, a very sensitive area, to a recognised uh, floodplain area. And they are the, that, that's what's, they're, they're the, uh, what we've got in place at the moment. Thank you very much. I think, can we, you're going to get, send us some more information. On the particular we'll, reasons yeah. why, as to and why the we will. groundwater should not be retained from those particular areas. And then I think we will understand this issue more. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, while we're on the subject of underground drainage system, I'm pleased to say that the procurement exercise, this is line nine, the procurement exercise has been completed to actually repair the underground drainage system within the footprint of North East Surrey. Uh, and those works, our plan to start um, next month in January. Um, it's a problem. Tree roots over the years break through the clay pipes, and um, and then of course that adds to the problem that we've just been discussing. So we are trying to address the the issues of of um, uh, groundwater flooding in in the cemetery and of course northeast Surrey. Um, and I think I'm, I, I'm, uh, there are two, two new capital bids for, for consideration. Um, and we've spoken about this before. And this is when we look at whether or not we're going to replace the chapel pews or we're going to look at a new seating system for the chapel itself. And therefore, I've, I've advised the treasurer 
to put in a capital bid of um, £25,000 for board's consideration in the new financial year. And then line 15, I've put a notional £100,000 in for stage two of the Garden of Remembrance. Stage one is the new piece of land that we're going to develop. Stage two will be to revamp the existing Garden of Remembrance because parts of that is now beginning to look tired and it needs a, a, a fresh look at it. But that won't, that won't come along until financial year 23, 24. So we've got a little bit of time on that one at the moment, but we thought it prudent to draw this to the board's attention that we will need some funding for that particular project. Thank you. Are there any other questions on Appendix D before I move on? Sorry, I'm a bit lost in my... We're, we're, not, we're not on to the D-Nox yet. No, that's where you're there. Okay. 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 Yeah. I draw your attention to 3.24, and this is the DNOX emissions abatement. If I could present this to the board, and then I'd be pleased to take questions afterwards. Um, I'm not going to read this in verbatim, so I'm just going to read out pertinent points from each paragraph. Um, NOx is a generic term for uh, nitrogen oxide, nitrogen oxide, and nitrogen dioxide. And they're produced from a reaction from nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrocarbons, and of course, combustion at very high temperatures. Um, it becomes a gas and it's referred to as NOx. Um, when it's released into the atmosphere, it can have a transboundary or local impact. And this is a source from DEFRA, and DEFRA, and I quote transboundary impacts occur when a pollutant from one area impacts on another after being transported by weather systems. An example of transboundary are acidifying pollutants such as nitrogen oxides. So that's a fact that's been reported by DEFRA. Um, NOx emissions really have come from cars over the years. Uh, however, we've seen a reduction in this type of pollution since the 1970s when we've had catalytic converters, and of course now we're moving towards electric and hybrid cars, um, and the car industry are seen to be cleaning their, their act up. Um, power stations have had this type of filtration uh, in operation for quite a number of years. Um, the levels of these emissions have been found to produce poor air, air quality with long-term exposure, contributing to a decrease in lung function and can, can also cause damage to ecosystems, animal and plant life. For people themselves, asthmatics and people with heart conditions, NOx emissions um, can have a, um, a, a, quite an effect on them. Um, NOx emissions are also a result of the cremation process but unfortunately, there's no practical way of eradicating these emissions during a cremation, given that we there is a legal requirement that we have to maintain minimum temperatures and oxygen levels during the cremation. So in other words, we can't reduce the um, temperature of a cremation because that's part and parcel of the cremation process. In addition, the cremation process itself uh, has quite a major source of emissions from manufactured materials such as chipboard, plywood, MDF and cardboard, which is part of, of course, the, um, the uh, cremation itself. Um, I would make a point at this here that our, our um, process guidance note, which is, which is our permit to cremate, does not require us to, to um, filtrate NOx emissions. So in other words, we don't have to do this at this point in time. Um, however, the Environment Agency are expected to release a report. And I said later this year because I was expecting it by now, because I thought it was going to be um, introduced in conjunction with COP26. 
but that didn't come about. Um, but my expectation is that we'll probably see a report later this year that could also have an impact on crematoria throughout the UK with their permit to cremate. But I'm speculating at this point because I simply don't know. Historically, and I'm on um, paragraph 3.30 now, historically, North East Surrey have proactively supported environmental initiatives. And in 2012, the government uh, introduced mercury abatement and they required 50% of emissions from accumulations to be abated. The board at the time took the uh, decision to, to abate 100% of their cremations and therefore went over and above what the legal requirement of was. Um, at the June meeting, I was tasked to investigate the possibilities of the introduction of denox filtration at the crematorium. And I then made inquiries with our term contractor, Faculty Technologies, who seem to have taken the lead on denox filtration in the UK. Um, I do know that any new build private crematoria now incorporate denox filtration, and any new build crematoriums where um, a new public crematorium is being built. Um, are introducing DNOP as, as part of the new cremators and mercury abatement process. Um, we've currently got a maintenance agreement in place with Faculty T, and it's it's a, a maintenance agreement known as a cost per cremation, whereby uh, contractually we've agreed a cost for the cremation, and that includes all of the maintenance of the cremators. Now, Knowing the industry over the years, I can say that that's a huge saving for the board, because if we were paying for uh, servicing and replacement of parts as we've gone along, I would say it would be a significant uh, more cost, uh, a significantly more cost. I'll give you an example. To um, if if you were uh, rebricked a cremator, you're looking at something like thirty to forty thousand pounds. Now we've got two of those, and the lifespan of those of those bricks, the refractory bricks, are around about six, seven years. This is all incorporated in our cost per cremation. So I was in confidence when when I was around when this this contract was put together. I was very eager that this cost per cremation was afforded to North East Surrey. Um, because of that. I put the um, circumstances to ones of council's procurement section because I didn't want to run the risk of um, us going out to tender and then we bring in another contractor to potentially fit retrofit denox abatement and then faculty teeth say that your cost per cremation is null and void because you put a foreign uh, piece of equipment onto our equipment. Uh, we can't afford to do that. It's all it, to draw an analogy, it's like driving an Audi car and then having BMW parts put, put on it. And then the, the, the Audi breaks down and you take it to the garage and then quite rightly they say, we didn't use our approved parts. Um, uh, the procurement section agreed with that approach and therefore they agreed for me to go to FT to establish a cost for potential DNOX um, abatement. Um, I'm on um, paragraph 3.36 now, and I'll draw your attention to page 23 of the report, which is Appendix E. So, what you have is a is a box that will, will will fit will be retrofitted to each of the two machines. So there'll be two two boxes in the crematory area itself. And if you look at the third diagram, you'll see the two boxes there that will fit um, onto the actual cremators. Um, and they, they're on wheels, and they can be disconnected and moved out of the way if there are a major um, servicing requirements with it. Um, 
because these machines are state-of-the-art equipment, um, it means that this sort of equipment can be retrofitted to FT. And I've got examples of that happening around the country. I've been speaking to people about Dinox um, all around. Um, yeah. Ask a quick question. Yes. Uh, does this equipment is quite new? Does it come with any warranty or guarantee? Well, that will be that will be part of the discussions we'll have with FT. But for the fact that it will become part of our cost per cremation, it will be uh, it will come under the umbrella of the warranty that we've got for the main cremators. Uh, is there any? Uh, I mean, your instincts are very good about going to procurement about you know uh, getting into a situation where we can't have any comeback for companies because we've got a piece of equipment in. I think that applies to a lot of areas of central heating being one. Um, I see it's got a tank level. Now, I, I don't know anything about this, but is there any waste from it that's got to be disposed of? Is it just dissipated into the atmosphere? No, no, there will be a waste. They're, 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 uh, that's there's... toxic, isn't it? It's, it's something it will be a controlled waste and it will be dealt with by facultative technologies as they, as they do the controlled waste for mercury abatement. So rather than it going through the chimney stack into the atmosphere, it will be dealt with by FT. So there'll be a recurring cost of that. That's yes, and that's in this report. And do we have to use this company for that waste or are we able to collect from away if we go elsewhere? We need to. I think it would be prudent if we kept it under the umbrella of backwards of teeth. They're the experts in what they need to do with any byproduct of Denox technology. I would expect in the in the uh, negotiations that uh, they wouldn't be making a lot of money out of uh, this post and make some obviously to cover their costs. But I mean, not I mean, not have a situation where. Anything is unduly expensive. Um, well, I know in terms of making money, um, the, the actual machines themselves would usually be £50,000 without any management costs. Because we are a regular user, um, that was decreased by £4,000 to £46,000. But of course, there are fees on top of that as well. And that's why a figure of £50,000 has been put in. Um, I don't think this is a, a money making scheme as such. I think this has been brought about because there is there is a need to improve crematorial emissions. Yeah, I, think it's, I think it's a good idea, generally, uh, you know, but uh, you just have to be a little bit careful. Of course. It's in its infancy at the moment. I haven't had any detailed discussions with FT because, of course, I have to get an agreement from the board to proceed with this. So, as I say, negotiating in its infancy, as I glean more information, then of course I will provide them as part of my report. I think the question, for reasons I don't have to explain, I think the question about uh, disposal of waste is an important one. Yes. And it's, it's, uh, if, it's properly, if it's properly controlled, that's fine. I'm sure it would be. The, and then we've been paying the management fees, so they will be dealing with that waste, we, it won't be an extra expense to us. No, the, the, the costs, I've, I've, yeah. the, the maintenance costs I've included in the report for yeah. decision. Uh, thank you. Two points. The first one being um, is, the first one is about the government guidance. Obviously, the what the one thing we wouldn't want to do is fix something and then the government guidance is different. But presumably what you're proposing is that we give you permission to go out and look at this technology and come back with a quote. Is that what you're asking? No, what I'm asking for is a decision whether or not you want to, for, for us to pursue fitting denox abatement into the crematorium. I've got the associated costs here. Can we let... Mr. Andrews finished the report and then we can come to any more questions, I think, um, and then make our decision. Thank you. Um, paragraph 3.38, 3 
Um, once the design services section would lead on the project on behalf of North East Surrey in conjunction with FT. Uh, a cost for the supply and installation of DNOX equipment has been received from FT of £46,000 plus management fees. So therefore, the Treasurer has put in a figure of £50,000 for the 22-23 budget. There would also be a consequential increase. Sorry, 22-23 budget. Yes, eight, post April. You haven't got them yet. Yes. An increase to the existing maintenance agreement based on the average number of cremations carried out each year would total a, an increase of seven thousand pounds per year. So that would be recur that would be recurring seven thousand pounds increase in our maintenance costs each year. Um, I've made contact with Burton's environmental health officer who oversees the crematorium's permit to cremate. And I've also spoken to Wandsworth's environmental health officer who is leading on the intentions for denox abatement on behalf of Wandsworth, Richmond and Merton Boroughs. Now, uh, denox, I've got to say, is in its infancy. There is only a handful of crematoriums in this country that have actually grasped the nettle and have carried out this type of technology because, as I've said, they don't have to. It isn't part of their permit to cremate. So it's really those that want to look at the environment itself rather than what they have to do um, on a legal basis. The introduction of DNOPS filtration will result in North East Surrey being one of a handful of a growing number of crematoria in the UK to include DNOPS filtration as part of their abatement equipment, which further addresses potentially harmful emissions and contributes towards improved local air quality. The initiative is also in line with North East Surrey's action plan to introduce environmental improvements to the crematorium. The Treasurer comments there is currently no legal requirement, as I've already stated, for us to install this type of uh, equipment. So in, in group, so in agreeing to support my proposals, the board must acknowledge that this will be a significant financial investment, but one that is prepared to be accepted in pursuit of environmental improvements. As there is no financial provision within existing approved budgets, a capital budget allowance of £50,000 has been made within the capital finance financial estimates and an associated increase in the revenue maintenance costs of £7,000 per annum. These costs have been included in the Treasurer's report and estimates are part of the Treasurer's report uh, as the next item on the agenda. So I'm now happy to take questions from the board. Um, yes, Councillor Ben. Councillor Benedict. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I um would be would be uh, aware if if mentioned if no no um uh legal minimum appointment uh, at the um moment but um in in the um in the future, if it if it be um um flare is um harmful to to the young people and farming uh, and I know so on. Do do you um have a um, plan in the in the future to 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 um be placing a fifteen um fifteen to you uh, at the no, I don't think we have. I mean, it's a subjective question. Um, as, you, as, as I've said, there's no legal requirement at the moment but for the fact that the Environmental Health Officer has contacted me and I've actually got a meeting with him next week. It's, it's, it's actually on their radar. Is that um, Andrew um, Peacock? No, it isn't Andrew Peacock. It's um, a chap called um, Mark Collins and he's spearheading um denox filtration and those discussions as i say as part of the of the three boroughs the ssa and Burton as well um of course i'll be able to furnish you with some more details once i've spoken to ft if i speak to ft subject to agreement 
and of course the environmental health officer as well. I'll bring that to a subsequent report. Thank you, Councillor Crosby. Did you want to? No, no, sorry. Councillor Benton, Dalton. Um, can I ask what's the shortest, quickest possible time scale? Six to eight weeks. So why don't we do it straight away this year and put in a put in a, a I'm sure we could be arranged if we wanted to. Well, six to eight weeks from start to finish in terms of being on site. Um, obviously, I've got to place the order with them and they've got to produce this this equipment so sorry i meant the full time scale full time put the whole thing in three to four months i would say minimum i'm i'm, I'm speculating yeah, yeah. I'm, here i'm only getting um, a range that's like, yes yeah so why don't we do it straight away um, i mean that's really a question to everyone else in a sense i'm not terribly interested in the legal requirement i'm sure the the board would always go along with the law yeah. But I am interested as a as a human being in what we're throwing out into the atmosphere, and I know enough people who is. In fact, I think I'm probably restricted in lung capacity myself as a result of living in London for a long time. Um, I think we ought to do it as if we're going to do it, and it sounds as though we are. And I'm taking a word for it, but it's a good thing to do. Um, I think we ought to do it as soon as possible. From this meeting, if I if I got majority decision, then my next move would be to contact ones with design services, who in turn would contact FT and we would place a purchase order with them. Yeah, I mean I was thinking about this. It's it's not our money that we're spending. So we've got to think that is this the right thing to do to spend this money now? um and then find in six months time we could have got a grant for it and so that that's one point um it is most definitely something that must be done at some point and we want to have confidence that the equipment that we're going to be putting in is up to doing the job we don't want you know is it um properly analyse that it is, you know, an, an efficient is it system. Future -proof? Is it future-proof? Is it future-proof? Yes. Well, well that looks future-proof. Well, well, no, it's it's think and then a hundred thousand three years down the line. Well, we've got some, some, of, some crematory have already done this, haven't they? And, yes. how, and what's the longest period of experience we have? Well, some of these, uh, some of these crypto I, I haven't got report back i've got, I've got to admit uh, this is relatively new it, it hasn't been tested but well, well, it has sorry it has been tested because it wouldn't have been introduced but in terms of long-term um effectiveness um i do know from reports i've seen that up to 60 percent of nox emissions will be taken away from the atmosphere if you put this particular equipment in and as i've said in my report i looked at other manufacturers in the cremation industry and i just can't see denox um, abatement being offered apart from ft so it's a, it's a very closeted um, area of, of work at the moment in terms of the answer to the chair's question um, one of my questions next week will be if we did go ahead, could we apply for a grant in retrospect um, if grants become available? But I spoke to a head of service in Manchester who is in the process of who have got the agreement to put DNOX in, and she had not been able to find any grant money available at this current time. You say it will remove 60% of Yes. So we're still going to be putting out forty percent, which is well, we are, but at the moment we're putting out a hundred percent. So um, it, it's an improvement. Yeah, yeah Councillor Bridgeard. Uh, thank you. I I think one of the pointers is, is this is applicable already to any new private crematory. I don't know how many, which would indicate that's going to be the direction of travel. Personally, yeah, it's 
50,000 plus the extra, but we could hang around for ages waiting for a decision on what the government think they might or might not do. And this is a capital spend. It seems to me sensible that we should try and do something because the public out there actually want us to do stuff and it's within our power to do it. Um, and the other thing linked to that is actually, I noticed in 3.28, the indication I see here into uh, about the source of it also makes me think that the type of coffin and the type of casket you have makes a massive difference. Now, I yes. don't know how well that is publicised, but whether when, when we do our new website or when you talk to the funeral art directors, we can talk through that because if, they, if people know, I don't know, for example, if they know they have a wicker coffin and it's going to help the environment, but actually might be moving in that way rather than other things. That's an interesting point, and it's a bit of a catch-22 because we've we've uh, been here before and spoken about funeral poverty and the cost of, of funerals in general. Um, the the components that make up a vessel for cremation are man-made and they're manufacturers. If you reverted to wicker, I can say wicker coffins are very expensive. Um, and natural wood, of course, are also very expensive. Now, that, those costs are only going to go one way. They're going to, to go to the families that, that are arranging those funerals. It's an unfortunate consequence of part of that funeral process. I hear what you're saying, that the funeral directors need to be aware of this, but I think there's an overarching point to be made here that costs need to be, when they can, Kept as low as possible. It's a difficult one. Uh, thank you. Um, it's a difficult one. I think I agree with everybody else that really it, it sounds desirable, providing we've got, you know, it is a product that is uh, going to uh, be here for a long time, hopefully. Um, how old is the product? When, when was it first in, in, installed in uh, this country? Well, it was, well, yeah. I but also, may I ask, uh, have you had a chance to um, visit the site, to visit any of the places where it's been installed? First question, and predictably, it was the continent that first uh, began to uh, introduce Dinox around about four to five years ago. So it's still relatively new. Um, from that experience, that's why new build crematoria are introducing DNOX as, as part of the specification. And your second question is, I personally haven't visited any any uh, crematoria that, that have had uh, DNOX fitted. I've just, they're, they're few and far between. They're, they're all around the country. Um, I mean, if the board wanted me to go and, and, and visit a crematoria, I could perhaps do something as effective by a team's call or or uh, whatever, but but I I make a note of that. I could ask what other crematorium that had this installed um, their experience of it, and are, are there any sort of pitfalls with it? So if you'd like me to do that, I'll do that between now and the next meeting, and I'll do that as part actually, uh, subject to approval again. Um, when I speak to faculty technologies, they can put me in touch with those that uh, they've already installed that type of equipment in their crematorium, and then I can have some some discussions on that. Can I ask you, it's, it's probably so slightly silly, husband, but you were saying that car emissions are being reduced by catalytic to convert. Yes. Is this going to be a similar process? Well, it's a it's a filtration process. Um, as you as you know, uh, older cars now are are, uh, are are being taken off the road because uh, emissions are more stringent now with the ULES in in okay. London. Um, it's it's simply a, it, it's the process, whether it be a catalytic converter or something that's been um, developed on a petrol or diesel engine. It's all filtrating um, byproducts 
Um, but of course, the, 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 the common vein is it's, it's at high temperatures. Um, a, a car operates, of course, an engine operates at high temperatures, as does a cremator. Um, and it's, it's a way of extracting that byproduct. Um, so there is, there is a similarity there. So having the filtration in the crematorium is quite new. Yes. But they've been working on filtration of these gases. So the, the, the development must be older. Well, yes, as, you, as I said in the report, yeah. power stations have, have had uh, this type of filtration in for many years. So they have been trying to uh, deal with it on an industrial level, but now, of course, collectively, you know, we are we are just a culprit. We are just part of a system of yeah. three hundred crematoria in this country, and collectively, there is an opinion that we are producing uh, NOx emissions. You say, Chair, that. Uh it's not our money um well it is in a way but it's also our air and i think our air in the end is more important um obviously it's a matter of judgment obviously it's ridiculous to bring it in three seconds after it's been invented but they've been operational on the continent for some time um my vote is always to install it straight away i would hate the news story that says uh, Southeast Surrey Crematorium Board. I mean, I, it's not that big a news story, but if it ever were to be, uh, was the last crematorium board uh, to uh, to keep the air clean. I'd much rather have the story. It's the, one of the first to, to make them clean. So that's where my vote goes. Excuse me, I'll be back in a second. I think I think this could be hypothetical, Claire. But are we going to spend fifty thousand pound on this piece of equipment now? That um, is only forty percent. Takes forty sixty uh, percent. Yes. Sorry, it takes of the emissions. So um, say say in two years' time, the government bring in legislation that these NOx emissions have to be um, eighty percent or ninety percent taken out. So. For, and that and that equipment cost sixty thousand pounds. Yes, that's that's my concern. Would there be something that this this these this FT company could put another converter onto onto this converter to make it work out ninety percent yes, instead yeah. of that, or do we have to pay another fifty thousand pounds? It's, it's hypothetical, but it's but it's still there. In the question. If you looked at the. Um, um, mercury abatement scenario whereby the government at the time didn't say you've got to um, filtrate 100% of mercury abatement, it was 50%. And that was a huge financial burden on the uh, cremation industry at the time. And that's why we had Cameo and the burden sharing scheme so that the larger crematoriums could, could help collectively filtrate um this out the system the, te the technology is where we are at the moment yeah. i can't say to you that 60 percent will be will be taken out of the atmosphere but who knows that technology might advance and we could then i be, could be coming back to the board to say if you want to we could filtrate 100 percent the the whole the whole scenario of Knox is going to improve because car use is improving particularly in places like london whereby um the car engine the petrol and diesel bit by bit is, is is being taken away and you're seeing hybrid and electric cars coming along then of course by default almost nox emissions will get better some might say then well, why did you spend fifty thousand pounds in 2022 to do so perhaps we're making decisions on where we are now not what we might be able to do in the future. So I take your point that yes, yeah, sixty percent isn't a hundred percent, but that's the technology that we have potentially to use um, now. I can't 
make any I thought, sense. Um, all in fear that, of cleaning the air cloud, it was just a hypothetical question. Yes, yeah, and it's, it's something. I'm in totally agreement with getting this air clean. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Councillor Richard. Thank you. Yeah, I think that the difficulty with the hypothetical stuff is this, is if we start now, we take 60% of our emissions out now, rather than leaving 100% going. So if the technology changes in three years or improves, what normally happens with these things, if you've got something in place, you don't have to catch up as quickly as if you had nothing. So I actually suspect that would be how it would work. And I just think, you know, we can do it. We should do it. We've heard what Councillor Belton says about that. That there are a lot of reasons not to do it, and that's one of the big troubles with dealing with air quality in any small way we can. Is people you can always think, oh, maybe we should wait. Well, we wait, and for the next two, three years, hundred percent of the NOx emissions go out, rather than forty percent. And I think I'm probably out. I think with any filtration system, it's never a hundred percent, is it? No, so it's much. Um, catalytic converters don't operate like that. No, so, they don't. No, I think anyway, so I think we should. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> well, the recommendation is at the end of the reports, which I think uh, Kathy will bring to your attention. But we've got the treasurer's report before that. Um, um, if there are there any other questions on DNOX before I move on, because I've always almost concluded my report. Yeah. So, so can you just? Are we going to? Are we going to into all the things that on the yeah, recommendation. Yeah, so, um, that really concludes my report for this quarter. Um, thank you for your attention. Um, and now we move to the recommendations from this report. Right. Thank you very much for a very thorough report and um, looking in particularly on the theme box. And can I, can I uh, Ms. Warren, to pass on to all of your staff how grateful we are for their hard work Thank you very much. and congratulate them on their training. Right. No. Okay. okay, so the recommendations that we're going to vote on. Uh, to approve the report and notice as an overview of the surveyor's findings for the management of the crematorium for the past three months, October to December 2021. Sorry, sorry for being sorry, sorry for being so slow, but what specifically are the surveyor's recommendations on the DNR? It's under 2.1 and 3.2. Yeah, I mean, I'm reading that. But it doesn't well, specifically yes. say what's the recommendation. What the recommendation is. Two point one is to to approve my report for this quarter, and two point two is to approve the installation of DNOX abatement equipment. And so, subject to your agreement, then I would move forward with the next stage of of uh, abatement. Okay. Second read two point two now then. To approve the surveyor's recommendations relating to the installation of DNOX abatement equipment to the existing cremators and approve the associated increase in revenue maintenance costs as per the crematorium existing cost for cremation scheme. In the quickest topic possible time, say. Yeah. Agreed. Are we all agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you. We're now going to move on to Mr. Taylor's special report. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this report is provided to allow the board to consider proposals on fees and charges, the management agreement annual budget, and the board's annual budget, and the distribution of surplus balances and to provide an update on the work of the external auditors in relation to the annual governance and accountability return for the year ending 31st March. There's there's five separate offences to my main report and the proposal will take you through each one in turn. So if you turn to Appendix A, which is on page 31 of the pack, 
Um, this is the annual review of fees and charges that will be applicable from the 1st of January 2022. So this, re this report reviews the current level of fees and charges for North East Surrey Crematorium. The charges are reviewed annually to ensure that income levels are sufficient to cover the cost of the services provided, especially where memorial items are purchased and then resold on, and ultimately to maintain the board's income levels to ensure ongoing financial viability within the longer term financial plan. Uh, in paragraph three, um, I've set out what the uh, relevant um, inflation rates are. So the September RPI, which is what we've used to set charges for uh, buy in the past, has increased 4.9%. Uh, the equivalent um, CPI rate at the time is 3.1, and subsequently has shown uh, an increase to 4.2% for the October release. Um, board will be reminded that it is meeting this time last year, the charges were frozen. Um, so the current fee is £605 for a standard promotion. As the surveyor said earlier on, um, the estimate is for 1950 promotions for the full year, and we uh, assume the same level for next year, which is obviously important in terms of looking at the amount of income we, we generate from the, uh, from the facility. Uh, paragraph 8 uh, sets out that the charges levied by the board for a standard promotion continue to be amongst the lowest in the country. Um, the Cremation Society website produced an annual league table of fees um, where we currently sit 308 out of 312. Um, the, the graph um, it probably would have benefited me in colour in hindsight in paragraph 8 uh, shows the North East Surrey charge relative to the most expensive offering in the country and, and the cheapest. So yeah, we, we can see that we're under half of what the, um, the, the the most expensive levels are or around half. Um, paragraph nine sets out the uh, relative fees in the surrounding area. Um, and basic conclusion in paragraph 11 is that yeah, with, with the increases, well, we need to know that the, the inflation is increasing. We need to know the, the pressure on wholesale gas prices, which is obviously having an impact on operating costs. Um, and consequentially, uh, we recommended that the a standard cremation fee be increased by £25, um, which is essentially a 4.1% increase. Um, this would deliver uh, approximately £55,000 per annum of additional income, um, and we will come on to proposals for the budget uh, later on within my report. Um, with regards to memorial fees, uh, as in previous years, uh, we have uh, full review and assessment of the memorial um, products that are offered uh, and, and checked the wholesale cost prices to make sure that our current prices as a minimum cover the cost. Um, all, the price, all, the, all the price charges are set out in the Appendix AI to this report, um, and I would happily take any questions on that, I'm sure. Thank you very much. That's all the way. Oh. Oh. Sorry, Councillor. Uh, Chairman, just leading on from the recommendation we just accepted on the Spurs report, is there any comments you wish to make about the uh, Projection of costs having this new um, process. Uh, I, I, any issues at all? Want to mention? Um, I mean, the surveyor set out that the estimated cost of the installation of the DNUX equipment would be fifty thousand pounds. We've made provision within the board's wider budget for that. Uh, it's actually um, just to create a clarity. It's actually built in for twenty one twenty two rather than twenty two twenty three in terms of. You know, the, the, the hope of getting it yeah, implemented as soon as possible. Um, I mean, in terms of the ongoing maintenance arrangement, yes, a uh, provision has been made within the day-to-day -day running cost budget, so to speak, uh, and to some degree, the proposed fee increase now will cover those uh, increased costs, the increased inflation, the increase in gas costs, and, and we will cover those in more detail going through. So, um, yeah, the, the, the £25 proposed increase is, is, is necessary really to uh, maintain income at relative levels as it is now uh, and, and obviously provides just 
the additional seven thousand pounds per year to cover the running costs of the the DNOS uh, filtration equipment. Okay. What proportion of um, of costs are the energy costs? Um, based on the current budget, the proposals for next year is that the gas costs will be about fifty thousand, which is significantly increased. We currently got a budget of about thirty thousand in there. Um, yeah, the the levels we're seeing. I mean, one. one sorry, John. Sorry, my math sounds flat. How does that equate to six hundred and thirty pound or six hundred and five pound? I mean, what? It, how much of that is about energy costs? Uh, I will. I will. I'll do some crunching of some numbers in a minute and come back to you on that. Um, yeah, it would be useful to set that up. I mean, the, 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 the six hundred and five or six hundred and thirty thousand pounds fee would generate um, six hundred thirty pounds. Six hundred thirty pounds fee would generate uh, one point two million. Uh, based on the, What about ten percent? Think of the overall. All right, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll clarify that though. And, um, so when COVID goes and energy um, Russia supplies the world with gas at the top and top and then we just have frozen fees for a few years. I mean that could well be the case. I mean the, the thing is, yeah, we, we are second guessing on gas prices. Um, through, through the procurement arrangements, I set it out in the, in the later within my report. We, we, we North East Surrey benefit from Wandsworth's advanced procurement of energy through uh, the Laser Consortium. So we've got a fixed price agreement that covers from October, just gone to October next year. And then we're trying to use the, you know, the laser over the experts, their forward projection of what cost might do. Um, we've allowed for 25 to 30% uplift beyond uh, October next year, but it's very, very speculative given the way prices are going. So the, so the second part of my report is the on page 39, which is the, the management agreement revised annual budget for 21-22 and the original annual budget for 22-23. The board is required to approve the annual budget and set the financial parameters within which Wandsworth Council are expected to operate with a view of achieving continuous improvements in the economy, efficiency and effectiveness of the services offered. Where Wandsworth Borough Council has agreed to subcontract the services, um, the management agreement annual budget equally applies to any subcontractor. So essentially this, this, is, this, is, this is the framework that Enable would be expected to operate within. Um, paragraph six sets out the revised gross expenditure budget for 21-22 is uh, just under 544,000 uh, compared to the original budget of five, just over 508,000, which represents an increase in operational costs of just over 35,000 or 7%. Um, the primary increase is the cost of the Wesley system. Now members be aware that the Wesley system is the sort of the media offering within the crematorium um, where the latest estimate has shown that overall costs have gone up 20,000 um, and I think Barbara might be asking a bit more detail on that in, in due course um, and for the revised budget administrative costs have increased by £9,000 per annum um, of which the large majority is in relation to gas which I mentioned earlier. Paragraph 10 set out that the gross expenditure budget for 2023 is uh, 587,000 compared to the revised budget of 544. This re represents a further increase of 44,000 or 8.1 percent from the revised position. With an overall increase of just under 80,000 compared to the 21-22 original budget. The proposed budget is set out on page 41 um, with the revised position and the next year position shown against the relative headings. Uh, happy to take any questions or comments on that. I'm all quite happy with the biggest explanation. Uh, third part of my report is on page 43. Uh, so based on the 
fees are charged and the management agreement with budget. We then have to produce the board's overall estimates for income expenditure um, and the overall budget for the current and next financial year. Uh, these, and these need to be approved, obviously, in advance of the year. The, the approval of the budgets uh, provides the framework within which expenditure can be incurred, uh, subject to the provisions contained within the board's scheme delegations. In um, Section 5, it's, uh, it, it states that the capital budgets continue to include the existing capital programme, uh, capital schemes, um, with cash flows. Uh, uh, Revised where delays are, are known. Additionally, as, as uh, the Spire has said, there's a couple of new schemes that are proposed. In paragraph seven, a state revised expenditure budget for 21 22 is just under 808,000 compared to the 21 22 original budget of just over 766,000, represents an increase of 41,000 or 5%. Um, the revised income budget for 21-22 is 1.46 million compared to 1.42 in 21-22, which represents an overall increase of 35,000 or 2.5%. In paragraph nine, the revised capital budget it totals 627,000 compared to original budget of 425. It, it looks like a, a significant increase, but it's actually to do with slippage on the schemes that weren't in the base at the start of the year. Um, so, ten taking all matters into consideration, the anticipated revised surplus for 21-22 would be 20, just under 29,000 compared to the original estimate. Of just under 238,000. So, so it, it looks like a massive shift in terms of the bottom line position. But what's got to be remembered is we were expecting to have spent more money last year. So we would have started with a much lower overall working balance position, if that makes sense. So any delay on spend last year has artificially increased the level of reserves we're holding. Um, and then as we do spend it this year, the in-year surplus is a lot lower, but we should end up broadly the same position at the end of this year as we would have otherwise have done if everything uh, had continued in the time that we'd expected. So moving on to paragraph 11, the original expenditure budget for 21-22 is 867,000 compared to the revised position of 807,750, represents an increase of 59,000. Um, the original income for so the original income budget for 22-23 is estimated at 1.518 million um, compared to 1.463, um, and, and that allows for the uh, increase on fees that we previously mentioned. Uh, the proposed capital budget for 22-23 is 275,000 set out in the um, report earlier. So taking all matters into consideration, the anticipated surplus for 22-23 stands at 376,000 compared to the 21-22 revised estimate at 200 and, uh, 28,000. Um, if I haven't confused everybody, I'm happy to take some <laughs> questions on that one. So sorry, the budget's set out in um, on page 47. That's the, the consolidated budget for the board. Thank you. Um, just moving on to D then. So this is the distribution of surplus balances to constituent authorities on page 49. So as previously approved by the board, surplus balances in excess of a reasonable working balance should be distributed back to the constituent authorities. Given the board's financial projections and the annual budget position presented here, it is therefore considered appropriate that the board's requirements for balance uh, having due regards uh, to, to commitments are, are reviewed. Um, and, and what I've done is, is set out a, a 10 year financial plan using the base position to project what the, the finances might look like. Um, and essentially, what we are uh, suggesting is that over the uh, the next 10 year period, uh, the next 10 years, we, we can naturally expect. Uh, yeah, assuming an underlying level of inflation on fees and you know, inflation on costs as well, uh, balances to increase. 
Um, the, the graph in paragraph 10 shows that there will be an immediate rundown of balances due to the high level of capital expenditure that is planned in the short term, uh, and then overall positions gradually increase over the remainder of the 10 year period. Um, if you see, there's, there's three separate lines on there. The, the top line there is showing the overall position. The, the one that's got a more uniform increase is the money being set aside for future cremator replacement. So the board, board have uh, agreed that we put money aside on a year on year basis to make sure that when they do need replacing at some point in the future, um, we, we've got sufficient resources there and then to do it. Um, so overall, in view of the latest financial projections, it is considered that the board is able to distribute balances totaling half a million for 21-22, the distribution of which is set out in paragraph 12. The table in paragraph 12. So again, I'll happy to take any questions on. Yes, Councillor Good choice. Thanks. Um, Councillor Good choice. Look at this year, your recommend rules taking uh five hundred thousand out yeah <clears throat> just looking at your projections mm -hmm. what sort of money would be coming out in future years that was the bit i couldn't quite work out from the table uh there's a column in there headed up distribution um you can see it starts at half a million in 21 22 and you think you'll still, we'll still have the set about half a million yes uh, so by all the cr cremate Everything else being equal, as long as numbers remain as as, as broadly what they are, and costs do not you know, increase over and above the level of inflation that we agree, or the board agree to increase fees by each year, um, it would be reasonable to expect as margin. So basically, that's an operating profit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we, there's. If we ended up with less operating profit because some, you know, say gas prices went through the roof, we're still pretty comfortable we're just the local authorities will just end up with a smaller amount coming in okay horrible capitalist world what profit as opposed to balance <laughs> <laughs> boss what's happening in it thank you very much and, and the final part of my report is on uh, page 53 which is um, the conclusion of the external audit for the year 31st to march um and essentially, the external auditors haven't raised any concerns this year, so it's just saying that uh, it's all good um, compared to the, the drama we had in the previous year when uh, COVID and virtual meetings delayed signing of reports. But yeah, there, there's there's no other matters to report, so there's nothing like that. And the copies of the bottle documents are attached um, from page 55 onwards. So if there's no uh, the, Question any the recommendation? Everybody happy? I believe the recommendation is there. Um, recommendations 2.1 in relation to Appendix A, the annual review of fees and charges. A approve uh, the fees and charges to take effect from the 1st of January um, 2022. 2.2 in relation to appendix B, the management agreement annual budget. A, approve the revised management agreement annual budget for 2021 and 22, and approve the original annual budget for 2022 23. 2.3 in relation to appendix 3. The income and expenditure estimate of the board's annual budget. A. Approve the revised income and expenditure estimates and the board's annual budget for 21-22. B. Approve the original income and expenditure estimate of the board's annual budget for 22-23. And authorize, C. Authorised payment to be made within these approved estimates and or within Chief Officer Delegated on Officers Limits. 2.4 in relation to Appendix D, the distribution of balance to the constituent authorities. Approve the distribution of 500,000 of this surplus balance in 2022 and the proposed distribution 
to const constituent authorities. 2.5, in relation to Appendix B, e, the conclusion of the external audit for the year ending 31st of March. Is that good to do? Thank you. Oh, it's me. So thank you. And A, approve the audited annual governance and accountability returns for the year ending 31st of March 2021. What do we all approve? Thank you. Um, now we're going to move on to the review of the standard orders. Again, it is the state. So, uh, but then this is a joint report. It follows on from the report you all received in uh, September, where we sought approval for the governance documents. Um, there are a few comments made uh, during debate um, in September, and we took away couple of matters to um, clarify them and bring the report back to this, this meeting and hopefully uh, it's relatively clear the amendments we've made um, but I'm happy to take any questions or comments. I think um, yes, the recommendation. Uh, note a further review of the board standing orders has taken place and 2.2 approve the standing orders as attached in Appendix A. Approved. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I ask? Oh, first of all, I want to say I think it's great that we've agreed to um, the abatement. I think if we can be ahead of the game, go for it. Um, and then can I also ask Ms. Drangy just to tell us, give us an update on the uh, money raised from the metal scheme? Yes, this is the, uh, the board approved recycling of metal scheme, which the crematorium participates in. We've got three beneficiaries from the scheme. Uh, we have Trinity Hospice uh, in, in Clapham Common. We've got some. Um, uh, some Raphael's Hospice in Merton, and we've also got the Royal Marsden at uh, Sutton. And I'm pleased to say that we've had a contribution from the ICCM Recycling of Metal Scheme, which the chairman has just signed the uh, letter that's going to the Royal Marsden at Sutton for some of £15,000. Um, I believe. I believe that uh, they're in the process of a, of a new unit that they're, they're building in Sutton and of course the 15,000 will be gratefully received. My intention is, and before we even receive the cheque, is particularly for new members, I'm going to give an overview of the scheme since it was first introduced as part of my March report uh, and that will give you details of how much money has been raised for the three beneficiaries over the years. Um, it's, it's quite a, a, a wide, widespread scheme throughout the cremation industry. I won't labour the point at the moment, but before this scheme was, was introduced, um, metals, as a consequence of cremation, were buried in the ground, which was just not economically or environmentally viable. Um, and we spent a lot of time some years ago um, debating the process and the proofs in the pudding. We've you know, I, I know we've raised at least £100,000 for those three charities uh, since we've been part of the scheme. So quite proud that uh, we continued with that. Thank you. Yes, that's what I was um, Can I also say thank you very much. It's actually a world-class cancer hub that is being built and it would be really good if we could actually put in some sort of um, thing to comms to say that this money had come from the crematorium, this £15,000, which will go towards the, that would be fantastic. So thank you very, very much. Yes, sorry, can I just also add, um, we did just also give them £10,000 in June because both amounts came into the one year of their term. Well, um, they've actually would have got so 25,000. Yeah. 
So well, that's huge. Even better. Easy Absolutely. Too. Absolutely. Great. So I think that's um, almost it. So we've got the um, dates for the next meetings for next year for our diaries. Tuesday the 8th of March, Tuesday the 21st of June, Tuesday the 6th of September, and Tuesday the 6th of December for next year. And um, I'd just like to, if we've got nothing else, no further business. <laughs>